Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, features, all of those cool things that's been happening within the Blender Foundation, Blender community, and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a truckload of stuff that you guys will be extremely interested to take a look. First off, we're gonna start off with the release of the LTS4 version of Blender 2.83. So Blender 2.83.4 is now available and it is also available for Steam users, Snap users, windows store users and so on automatically if you're working with steam snap or you're working with the windows store you can get this update so if you're working with linux you'll be able to get this one going something else that is very interesting that has also been done with this release is 19 different bugs has been fixed so you can simply scroll all the way down go over to change log and you'll be able to take a look at these ones and if you're also considering you know what and what you would like to do with blender as a tool maybe you might try out this very cool add-on that is now available for blender so the guys at ubisoft has actually gone through to release an amazing add-on that you can simply use so we did talk about this one some time ago where we said that the mixer was something that ubisoft was working on so if you would like to collaborate you would like to share things and you know work within the same scene with someone else in a different country using a different ip something like that or you want to work across teams then you can get this going i'm gonna put the original link in the description as right now if you go over to this link and you download whatever you find here you might probably not be able to get it up and running but then there is a different link within the gitlab where you would find every version update so with this said let's dive directly into blender and take a look at how this works so you can know what you're getting yourself into so i'm going to simply fire up blender and you can see by default to have just the you know the very default cube once you download that add-on go over to edit go to preference go over to the add-ons and install that so what we're going to do is going to be very simple i'm going to get rid of the default cube one two three out and if you press n on the keyboard you would notice you have the mixer right here and i'll also do the same thing right over here so let's just pretend all right let's pretend that we are working with a team and this is our part and this is our host you know just simply click on connect and next thing which you would like to do is create a room and right now i'd like to set this as playroom and create a room you can choose whatever name you want it's just totally up to you next thing which i like to do is on a different computer you know you're within the same host using the same port you can also choose to connect and once you do that you would notice that the playroom actually appears here and you can go through and join the room and one thing which you notice let's press n on the keyboard to get rid of those turn around you notice that i have my guy okay so that is the name of this particular computer which we're pretending we have and you now notice i have your guy which is you know the name of this other computer you know that we're working with so what we can do here is we can simply create a grid and you can notice that once your guy is doing something my guy gets to see it so let's press n on the keyboard and my guy chooses to drop susan the monkey right there and your guy gets to see that and your guy seems to think that susan the monkey needs some subdivision and he goes ahead to throw in that subdivision right there and we switch over and apply the subdivision let's stretch this all the way out and your guy gets to see it so you can see the endless possibilities that this can actually create so at this point if you're working in a team it's definitely easy for you to collaborate across you know projects so at any point in time you can just you know put whatever you want let's say we'll put the torus right here and this other guy sees what you're doing let's move this all the way back and maybe this other guy chooses to throw in maybe a cube and of course you can tell where each of the collaborators are looking at so you could easily tell them to come take a look at Suzanne and if they scroll all the way and go over to where Suzanne is and you know you get to see that update you can tell what who is doing at a given time and I think this is very good for small teams and, and stuff like that if you also want to see if the sculpting works yes it does so if you switch over to the sculpting section right now let's go ahead and increase our brush size to something like this and let's just simply sculpt once you sculpt and you jump all the way back here you would notice that this applied so if these other duties actually working on the model let's say select the model press tab on the keyboard let's go ahead and select this model press tab on the keyboard select the first face let's tap insert right there and also extrude you don't see that update going on here but once they jump into the object mode you get to see that so this is going to be extremely cool and extremely useful for team collaboration speaking about add-ons the guys at blender market are doing the summer sale which is 25 percent off so just in case you have no idea about that there is actually a 25 percent discount sale that is going on within the blender market and we've already talked about some of the cool tools that you can get and you can literally see some of them here i'm putting links 
links to most of these in the description so you can also go through and check it out i also discovered that there are certain cool tools that you guys would also want to see so one of them is called face it so face it is a blender add-on that you can get and this simply allows you to semi automatically create and generate facial blend shapes for your humanoid character so whether you're working with a stylized character a realistic character you can easily generate shape keys and for the most part because this is working with the apple ar kit shape keys which are the basic blend shapes that you need for facial performance capture you can also go through and connect your iphone x and maybe your iphone 11 all of those iphone x plus series and you can use them to control your face to me i think this is a very good add-on for anyone who is into facial motion capture or maybe facial performance or you're trying to create some sort of animation and you're looking forward to create you know blend shapes and maybe you're trying to drive those blend shape by simply using you know a facial performance then this is going to make a lot of sense on the other hand you can also choose to use this and just for the fact that you can create quick blend shapes out of these or shape keys as it's called in blender you can simply use these and create these things rapidly two more renders that we need to give a shout out to is the render set from the guys at polygonic and this is a render manager so if you've ever had a hard time trying to manage your renders directly in blender or you want to have some sort of control over how your stuff gets rendered and stuff like that then you should consider taking a look at the render manager as this would definitely make your life easy one other add-on which is very nice which i actually found out accidentally is the layer painter so if you're tired of you know running around trying to find that painting tool that you can use to do your pvr texturing or maybe you just want to do that you know substance style kind of painting directly in blender then you have actually found something reasonable as the layer painter is an amazing tool that you can use and it also comes with both mask filters you know and all of those things that you need for painting directly in blender now this is more like a replica of what you can use substance painter for but this works basically and only for blender so with this said let's take a look at one free add-on that will save you time of course you would need this one as it's an essential tool for everyone and it is called drop it so we did see face it okay and now we see drop it so what is drop it drop it is an add-on that you literally need if you're into dropping things then you need this add-on so what this does is you can simply create let's say we create a grid right now and i'm going to simply scale that grid all the way to the top and let's create something else let's say i create a torus let's move this torus all the way up to a point so let's say you are creating a couple of things let's say we create one two three four five and six okay and these things you want them to actually touch base so what you can do is you can simply select all of them with the add-on installed once you right click and click on drop it it's going to simply drop these things to the closest object that is available you can see how this drops across this other one and this makes sense so if you also want to drop this somewhere else instead of trying to make sure that you fit into the right point things like that just simply get this add-on right click and click on drop it and it simply drops this properly for you so if you're into dropping things or if you're into copying things and you want them to drop in the proper place or in the position where you would really want them to drop then you can simply get this add-on and save yourself some half ache so these are some pretty cool add-ons that i found out within the week and i just felt that it might make sense for you guys to take a look at them the blender market sales is going all the way up until 7th of august so if you would like to get any of these things they are on 25 percent discount right now so i think it might be the best time for you to come through and get it so with all of this said let's take a look at some of the cool features that are now coming over to blender 2.91 and of course you would be like why are we talking about 2.91 yep because 2.90 is wrapping up okay so 2.90 is wrapping up for release which is going to be coming on the 26th as it's been proposed on the 26th of august and right now beacon one has actually started out for blender 2.91 so you can see like right here that we have beacon one which has to do with new features and changes which has started all the way from july 22nd 2020 and 
you know, there are some very, very extremely impressive new features that I would like to show you guys. Actually, we're going to go through four of them, which I think you guys would like. And there is going to be one nice honorable mention that you would definitely find interesting. So switching over to Blender 2.91. So with Blender 2.91 open here, you would notice that we have a default cube. Let's simply subdivide that, right click, make that smooth, go over to this part and simply apply this. Right now, we're going to be looking at about two different friends features first of all is the multi-res multi-res was supported for sculpting in blender 2.90 and now it's also implemented to also work alongside the clothes filter at the same time we're going to take a look at how you can work with the new collision feature that now exists for the clothes filter and also for the cloth brush itself. So with our grid selected, what we need to do is add the multi-res modifier and with our sphere, which is obviously our cube, which is subdivided, we are going to make that a collision object. First things first, if you move over to the sculpting room and select the cloth filter and simply drag, you would notice it passes through. The reason why this passes through is because within the cloth filter settings, we did not turn on use collisions. Now, once we turn on use collisions and do this one more time, so you can now have colliding object. Of course, you might not necessarily see this, you know, having a huge collision happening, but the fact that this is coming in now makes sense. Now you can obviously go over to your modifier and increase your subdivision count. If I move this all the way back, so let's get this going all the way up and let's do that re-simulation one more time you can notice that we are having this looking even way better so you can run this through again and you can see that we have that going on so with this collision now available here we can increase our subdivision with the multi-res and we can go in here and start sculpting okay so we can now start sculpting with multi-res accompanying the fact that you can now simulate with collision right here in blender 2.91 of course the collision still needs a couple of work to be done but for the most part this works and this makes sense so now that we've seen the clothes filter and the collision feature that now exists with blender 2.91 let's take a look at the clothes brush so the clothes brush now has collision tied to it and we're simply going to go ahead and lose the multi-res so we can have something way easy to play with and with this cloth brush let's go through and expand that now with this cloth brush we can easily switch over to the two settings and then click on the pin simulation boundary. Of course, we talked about this one last week, but it wasn't available for tryouts, but now you can see it. So once we click on this, you would also notice we have enable collision. So we also have enable collision that is now active with the cloth brush. Most times you would notice that once you're using the cloth brush, you don't get to see a huge, you know, movement or you don't get to see some sort of cool feedback that you want. What you need to do is to shoot up the strength so that you can get that orange thing all filled out because if it's small, you get to notice we have a very tiny fall off in the middle. So just shoot this all the way up and you can also play with the simulation limit. So at this point, once you move your object, you now notice that you can easily, you know, manipulate this. Something else which also makes a lot of sense is if we switch from the drag and go to the grab, we can now easily grab our object and move it around. So I can select this, move this around let's increase our simulation limit something like that cool so we can now get some nicer looking stuff and you notice it still finds a way and tries to respect the collision that we have the collision object that we have right there so this is also something pretty nice that is now available for blender sculpting room so if you're trying to you know get the cloth thing working there you go and this for me is a good step in the right direction so with this out of the way let's take a look at a brand new feature that is now available for cycles and this has to do with you being able to render alembic files and also have motion blur while rendering this has been something a lot of people have wanted and it's cool to see that you can do that so for you to get this going what you need to do is go over to your render settings and with cycles enabled you need to turn on motion blur if you want to make any changes of course you can do that there and once this is done you can simply go over to render and render that image you would not be able to see this motion blur directly on your viewport and you know that is what it is you just have to render for you to be able to see that and of course a huge shout out to our friends at zari for giving us this model and allowing us to play with the alembic model if you want to learn anything about marvelous designer link is going to be in the description where you can check them out another cool feature that is also available is the ocean modifier the ocean modifier has also been reworked last time when we talked about the ocean modifier we did talk about 
the fact that you can now drive like the foam and other things by simply using data files right now they've added a very cool feature to it which is the resolution for the viewport if you remember with blender 2.83 we did see the ocean modifier come over to blender but if you take a look at the two interfaces you can definitely tell that the 2.91 looks way more professional way more organized and with a cool feature like the resolution for the viewport this can help you optimize your scene so in case you want to increase the number of details you see within your viewport you can get that going if you want to tone that down for performance issues you can also get this one going another cool feature that you also notice with blender 2.9 is for most of the parameters that you have once you create a keyframe you would also notice that at the edge there is a very tiny keyframing button there so you can simply create a keyframe move over to another section create or you know change the timing and you can simply use that button at the edge of the keyframe parameter to add an extra keyframe i think this would save you a lot of mouse traveling time across your viewport and for me these are some very nice looking features that are coming over to 2.91 which i simply like because if you simply compare this with what we have with blender 2.83 you would notice that this feature doesn't exist and the layout for the modifier to a large extent doesn't really support something like that and before we go the open positions at blender foundation is still available so if you want to work as a senior back-end developer, writer, editor, blogger, developer, community coordinator, you have a chance at working with Blender, simply sending your resume as these offer or these job positions are still here. And so that's definitely going to be about it. I would like to know what you guys think about all of these updates in the comment section. What do you think about the guys from Ubisoft and the amazing add-on which is called Mixer, which you can use across teams? And what do you think about the very cool add-ons that are available right now? The guys at Blender Market are still doing the 25% discount. So you can simply avail yourself of this opportunity and get this. And of course, I would like to know what you guys think about the Cloth Collision Brush that is now available for public use with Blender 2.91. Tell me what you think about all of these cool updates in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.